eventually I barely even care about money. I'm barely even thinking about it anymore. You think the evildoers haven't figured that out? You think that's why they don't allow true capitalism? Yeah, that's why. So we've got what essentially amounts to anti-capitalism, a substitute for true capitalism. You could say the opposite too, because the effects are the opposite. True capitalism heals the divide naturally. As we all, people are prosperous, they become very secure, they don't even care about money anymore. They're, sure, the big fat tippers get tip fatter and fatter and the money's just out there. It's like, wow, why do we even bother playing this silly game anymore? I mean, why don't we just take what we want and need? Everybody's willing to contribute, and you know, it's just great. Just it works fantastic. We've got freedom and prosperity and security and joy day in and day out. That's the reality we could have in short order if we listen to the spirit of truth. Okay, that wants it just like our parents that want to give us all. What do you? What does any parent want for their kids? Do they not want those things? Of course they do. You know, the scriptures are full with great, great knowledge and wisdom and truth. You know, King Solomon, God, I don't know, I call him the wisest man in the world, but he really got into some succinct truths. Like, loving your enemy to your enemy is like pouring hot coals over their head. you got to understand that. That's, that's huge. So understand, they don't want it, but they need it. And it's good, and we must do it. And you can't fake that love. It's got to be real, genuine. And there's a whole lot of ways that we can express that love. That's why I've compared it to mulch, because there's a lot of different kinds of mulch, okay, that works better for different situations. So you are tactful in how you love. It's just caring about people, showing kindness, friend, being friendly, okay? You can tell somebody you love them, okay? But we must do this to people that we feel are unlovable, the most vile of men out there. This is what we're called on to do. So it's, it's critical to understand this truth. It really is. It's a big deal because you, you understand the differentiation between the mind of men, typically, the way we're trained at least, and the mind of God and how they can be at odds and different. And you got to get that. I mean, the stuff, you know, the way we're supposed to think and our values and stuff are often different. Okay, do we value human beings far more than money? Would you be willing to surrender all your wealth to save a million people, a billion people, a hundred thousand people? 100 people, 10 people, one person. See, God knows your heart. He knows what you would do under those circumstances. You see, this is why wealth is considered a snare to the soul of a young man. It's, you know, because his values get warped and corrupted at a very young age. Everything gets twisted in their mind. You understand? So we need God at the end of the day. I mean, friends, that's all, the best I can give anybody. And I, I would that's all I've got to give. That's it. We need God. You need a relationship personally, individually. Okay. We all do. And collectively, we got to get it together and stop neglecting the needs of the downtrodden. Stop neglecting the needs of G literally Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing. And then calling ourselves a Christian nation and thinking that God's wrath doesn't hang heavy over our land. My God, I mean, we're in trouble. We're way down this demonic rabbit hole toward hell. Okay. They're trying to instill a, 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 install a third world, fourth world nation in America and get away with it. And they know they can't get away with it here. We're a Bible thumping nation for the most part. And it's just the power of God is going to take over and they know what's coming. They smell the coffee. They see the writing on the wall. They know their days are numbered and they don't like it. But this is what has to happen. The opposite of what they're trying, what has been inevitable by their policies just keep watering down the money. Just keep watering down the money. They expected some, what, what, they can thieve from us forever? Evil men. I mean, it's just evil men have done this to America and the rest of the world. But when believers, when they discuss, they converse with each other, it's like metal sharpening metal is one of the other things King Solomon said. It's just really succinct stuff that made you, and as a metaphor, helped you understand what's going on here. Is that we learn from each other. Look, we might disagree on some political things, but if we're believers, we say, okay, I got to listen to this person. That's the rightful thing to give people dignity and respect. And then they should listen to me. And we, it's give and take. And then maybe I can say, well, wait a minute. You know what? You open my eyes to something and you might say the same thing. And we grow from that. So metal sharpening metal. Okay, we, we learn more. Our power grows from that knowledge and understanding. 
that clarity of thought coming more and more out of Babylon, out of confusion, out of ignorance. You know, TMZ Live was the first to play this thing. Then I saw it on Inside Edition. Even on the local news, they played this this scene where this woman was in a in a uh, some kind of store, I guess, and she thought this other girl took her teenagers, thought she took her phone. And this woman, the woman she was accusing looked white. I mean, all she had to do was open the phone and show any little thing in there that identified the phone as hers, and the whole thing would have gone away. But instead, she played it up and all this, and the dad's all indignant and outraged. The woman, she's whiter than me, for God's sake. But they say, she's a black girl. How am I supposed to know she's black? She looks white to me. So it was like two white girls arguing. One girl thought she took her phone. I mean, I could imagine that happening. But, you know, I mean, she blamed the wrong person, obviously. But the, all the girl had to do to show, hey, it's my phone, look. You know, show her. Oh, I mean, good grief. This is so stupid, but TMZ makes a big deal. Oh, this is, this is sensational stuff here. You know, I wonder, I have a query about Bitcoin. What will be the outcome for the Bitcoiners, karmically speaking, if um, the investors have technically obtain their wealth legally, but immorally, that is in an ill-gotten gain manner? I, I don't think it portends well for the Bitcoiners if they get involved. I mean, they've already stolen all the profit, these big players, these fat cats, money to burn, investing millions and billions, whatever the hell they're investing. No, 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 no. The vast majority of profits already been snatched out of Bitcoin. You know, I don't get into the minutia of economic stuff. You know, I really don't bother with that. It, it just, it, you don't need to know that. You need to know the fundamental truths about things like supply and demand, how that works, why your money is supposed to go up in worth, okay? Hey, we find easier and easier methods of producing all the things we need and want. It's as simple as that. That's why your money should go up in worth. They say a watch pot doesn't boil. So, you know, next time you're waiting in a line or in stuck in traffic, try to remember that. And understand that eternity is comprised of but a series of moments. So that's all we have at any given moment in time. You know, I watch a lot of these court TV shows. I watch Judge Karen. And you know what she was telling this guy? You know, oh, don't worry. There's, you know, it's two women for every man out there. I thought, what? You know what? I I thought there was always more women than men, at least in America, but um, she, uh, but I looked on Google and they say, no, it's actually, there's slightly more uh, men than women. And I was surprised. I mean, with all the suicides, it's four to one men killing themselves and much many more men dying in war and of sudden infant death. If so during infancy, and yet there's more men. I mean, it can't get straight facts. I mean, is, what does Google know? Are they right or wrong about that? Is there more men or women? I don't know. It's just one of those curiosities that you just want to know the facts on. All right, friends, I'm on to some thoughts from this last week or so. The fact is that we can all be wrong sometimes. And by extension, it is not a stretch to say we can all, therefore, be deluded and that the implications thereof are dire. An important takeaway from this revelation should be to judge one another lightly when we perceive them to be wrong, if we hope others to judge us lightly when we are wrong. One of but a plethora of reasons the evil, elitist, insatiable gaggle of thugs currently in control of planet Earth, including the affairs of men and their corresponding reality, are desperate to keep secret the fact that there indeed are higher, more advanced beings, including their accompanying technology, it is because it would confirm the truthfulness and the accuracy of Scripture, including all other theological teachings regarding the existence of higher beings, beings biblically referred to as angels. To speak logically is by default position also speaking intellectually. The only bad thing we could ever possibly conceivably blame God for would be for free will choice, but obviously that would be stupid since we wouldn't be human anymore. Rather, we would be mere automatons operating on pure instinct. Did you know that you are a cosmic creature with 
euphoric origins that your parents, witting or not, were simply following God's ecstatic order to, quote, go forth, be fruitful, and multiply. Well, friends, i got to leave it there. Listen, have a great day, have a great eternity, and have a happy new year all year long.